hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and we're here for a bit of book community where I kind of keep you abreast of the goings on and shenanigans of the bookish community. And I say kind of because it's way too much to keep up with. So <laughs> most of you already know this series, but if you're new here, I try to run down things that are happening um, in the bookish community. It could be publishing, it could be something with a specific title or author uh, or general mess that is going on on booktube. It could be bookstagram, book talk. Today has to deal more with a publisher and of course it's probably in the thumbnail, but it's about St. Martin's Press and the boycott that has been going on. And I'm gonna talk to you today about whether that boycott is still ongoing or not. And then before there was a more recent decision made by a group of people about the boycott, there was also some, shall I say, spicier drama regarding a sex toy that the recipients did not ask for or consent to be sent to them. So that's what we're gonna be getting in today. But before we go there, I would like to tell you about a sex toy I received, but they did ask because they could send it to me. <laughs> so yes, I said, there's a company that reached out and asked my consent before sending me a sex toy or two or maybe three. So these three toys were sent by Balesa, which is a company ran by women that cover all things sexual wellness. And they are giving away toys or gift cards to anybody who enters my giveaway. You might've seen that I did a community post um, with a link and the link will also be in this video. But yes, they sent me, I thought I was getting one, but they sent three. So I'm gonna go over these and tell you what I like about them. So Balesa's mission is to embrace, explore and celebrate sexuality and I just thought this was a fitting uh, sponsorship for this video which we will get into but anyway I have three so I have Thump, um, the Air Vibe and the Pebble and these are the discreet cases that they come in. Look how cute. I hope you can see it's raining outside but just like this is these cute little cases like who would know what's in here or this one I mean honestly it could be glasses so maybe don't leave this around someone who might think these might be glasses and then they open up and BAM it's not glasses <laughs> but this is the thump <laughs> probably my favorite name um, but it also it thumps vibrates and has suction they all like they're all made of silicone so they feel really nice and they're really easy to hold with the shape so I mean with this one, it does it all. So like it, it has all of your stimulation needs, obviously this discrete case and how you can charge it, the silicone material, it's waterproof, she does it all. Now, if you had to ask me my favorite, it would be between these two. I think maybe if you're going for a travel vibe, I would go with the Pebble, um, but at home the Air vibe, but I'll show you this one. And this was the one you probably saw in my community post. Again, just this cute little case, but this, mm -hmm, double time she is <laughs> silent but deadly but in like a really good deadly way like <laughs> bitch i'm dead but like very pleasantly please you know what i'm saying but anyway obviously it's dual stimulation here because i mean isn't two times better than one yes i think so <laughs> <laughs> and then the most like the smallest one and why I would say this one is great for travel is the pebble and also it just it fits again really well in your hand this one also has dual where it vibrates but there's also suction and so the suction and the vibrate controls are are independent so you can like change one without changing the other again fits really nicely in your hand and goes back into it's super cute little you're like is this a makeup compact <laughs> no boo it's something better so again thank you to Balesa for sending these to me and if you enter the giveaway you're gonna be leaving with something <laughs> like uncle denzel would say so that's either gonna be toys or gift gift cards to use on their website the air vibe mm, dual stimulation okay the pebble very cute very small great for travel and then uh, big thumper gal i mean but she's not huge let's not let's not shame her in her size but she's just a little bit bigger she does it all bam 
<laughs> so thank you to Balesa for these products, for sponsoring today's video. And again, check out the link in the description so you can get you some, okay? Okay, so this goes back, if you are a frequent viewer here, someone who's chronically online in the bookish space and that you probably know, so back to October 7th, 2023 but then post that I don't know how soon after this there was a person who was posting very um, anti-muslim um, things on their Instagram now I don't know or don't remember because I of course didn't follow this person so they it must have been on their Instagram or people just knew that they were employed by St. Martin's Press but it got around that this person was saying these terrible things especially in in light of what had just happened on their stories and that they were employed by St. Martin's Press so that kind of that steamrolled the whole thing where people were like oh this is not cool St. Martin's Press needs to make a statement like what is going on do you want this kind of person working for you additionally other people I think they also knew or this was speculated about that this person also was one of the people who was in charge of sending out arcs correct me if I'm wrong to readers arcs are advanced reader copies and so then people started talking on social media a lot a lot of this I saw on TikTok about how so there were white readers who were like I get any arc that I want and more from St. Martin's Press or their imprints and other black or brown creators were saying that they struggle to get advanced reader copies from St. Martin's Press and their imprints even when the book is written by a black or brown um, person and so that just added more fuel to the fire. Then I I apologize I don't have the exact timeline because so much time has passed but then at some point a group of readers formed readers for accountability like a group and there was no like public figurehead like there was no person that you could say is the leader of this and I think they did that for a reason now after the fact some people have come out and said I was a part of readers for accountability but back then it was just like a website an Instagram a TikTok like we are this group who are addressing St. Martin's Press. Now, again, a lot of things have happened just in life in general since that time, but it's been said that a creator on TikTok, Lean, was the one who called for the boycott. I cannot say if that's true or not, I don't remember. But anyway, it ended up being a thing where they were gonna boycott St. Martin's Press and the imprints under that. Now, St. Martin's Press is under Macmillan, I believe, but then there's imprints under St. Martin's Press. Child, I don't know how that'd be happening, but I got the website. Hold on. Wait. They got a little emblem. So I can insert the image here, but it had St. Martin's Griffin, Wednesday Books, Castle Point Books, Nigel, brother, St. Martin's Press, St. Martin's Essentials, and Minotaur Books. So the whole boycott has been about a marketing boycott. They said still buy the books to support the authors but don't promote them on your social media so on Instagram don't do it on YouTube don't do it on TikTok um, to try to force the hand of St. Martin to address this issue and like make a statement so they did have demands so let me pull those up y'all are really just gonna be getting Nigel ASMR I'm sorry Boo -boo Buki is sleeping good and I cannot disturb him that's why I filmed in here because if I got up and go and filmed in the room, he would have gotten up. And I don't want to interrupt Bebe's sleep because I'm a good mother, you know? Okay, so the demands of the boycott are one, address and denounce the Islamophobia, Islamophobia racism from their employee. Two, offer tangible steps for how they're going to mitigate the harm this employee caused. Three, address how moving forward they will support and protect their Palestinian Muslim and Arab readers, influencers and authors, in addition to their BIPOC readers, influencers and authors. So those were the demands of the boycott. Now I'm gonna come back to the sex toy bit, okay? So this has been obviously going on since October or November, I don't know when it officially started. And um, again, the whole thing was to not, there's another image that I saw here. Don't platform, rate or review St. Martin Press books. Uh, you can still buy, borrow, and read them. A marketing boycott pressures the publisher while still supporting the authors. That is what they were demanding. So this has been going on for a while. They had released a statement and people were like, wow, that's very lackluster. And if I can find it, the original one, I'll put it in here. But fast forward to, was this a month ago? A few weeks ago? 
promo marketing PR for a very popular book by Casey McQuiston or an anticipated book by a very popular author because it hadn't come out yet. I don't know if it's out yet, but I'm gonna look it up. Now, I know when Izzy, happy for now, was talking about this in her Romance Landia video, she chose not to say what the book was in support of the boycott. Um, and again, I'll get more to that. Some people now are like, the boycott's over and some say no. I'm going to tell you the name of the book because I think that it, it, it it goes with why this was part of the PR package. But anyway, it's a book by Casey McQuiston, who's very well known, especially for Red, White and Royal Blue and some other books that have come out. But this recent one is called The Pairing. And it is supposed to be a very smutty, spicy book. So it is going to be a rom-com with two bisexual exes accidentally booking the same European food and wine tour and challenge each other to a hookup competition to prove they're over each other, except they're definitely not. And so the PR box was really supposed to be about all the senses um, because it's supposed to be food tour, very sexual between the two of them or, you know, and with other people. So I think the box included a sex toy, a maybe some honey. I have to look up all the things, but it basically were things for like all five senses, right? And I'm like, that's a really good box. But then people were like this is not okay because no one consented to be to receive a sex toy in their PR box. And I think there's a lot valid things being said and discussed around this. But then there were some things where I was like, I think no one's using critical thinking. Like some people are like, Oh my god, like, how did they get their information? They gave it to them. Like, I, I mean, I know our data is being stolen all the time, like literally, but you at some point signed up for a marketing list, a PR list, an ARC reader list or something with a publisher at some point for them to send you things. Now, I don't get unsolicited PR boxes. I'm also not like some massive creator that has influence over people to read books, especially like not on book talk. Um, so anything that I get is usually they email me and ask if I want it and then I would get it. So I, they don't have my information, right? And they didn't send that to me, but there were people who did receive that. So I just saw some conversations of like, oh my God, how did they get this? And I'm like, okay, let's be for real here. They didn't just randomly steal your information. You signed up for something, especially if, it, and I wanna say, you could even sign up for Macmillan and they just have your information, but you most likely probably signed up with something from St. Martin's Press. Um, and then people were like, they did this because of the boycott to stir controversy. And I'm like, well, possibly. Did it work? I don't know. Um, but it is for that book. Now someone, I think the maybe one of the first people who said something was a person 18 or over who received the box and apparently opened it in front of their their parent their mother and I guess this was kind of embarrassing but this led to other conversations of people saying that this is dangerous for them to uh, send out a sex toy in a box without getting someone's consent first because and this is not me making this up these are things I've heard online what if they were in a domestic violence situation and they received this and like they opened it in front of their partner or their partner opened their mail and it was in there and I'm like that's possible, I guess. I just, I don't know. I'm not gonna go down these roads because there are all these different um, what ifs that could possibly happen. Um, but I think people also, I just see some conversations of comparing this to like, I know there have been PR boxes in the past that have had like alcohol, like a little shot, um, like a mini bottle or something in there. And they're saying like, you shouldn't do that to not get people's consent. Um, and so I can understand why people are upset. I also think since this was, I'm sure, pretty sure just sent to Americans that we just as Americans have just a very like, we're just prudish when it comes to like topics of sex, even though we're all, not all, but a lot of us are reading these smutty books. But then you know it's people who are like, well, I like the illustrated covers because then people don't know I'm reading a romance book or like, I don't want people to know. We just have this like, I think it's a, I think it's, uh, uh, something you're born with as an American is like shame about sex and liking it. And oh, not my crystal light. Sorry, 
<laughs> ashamed about sex, liking it, talking about it, reading about it. Like there's just a deep inherent shame. And I think that's part of it. But like, I understand people's concerns about why this was sent out outside of it being there's a marketing boycott going along with it. But then I'm like, do y'all not remember dick soap? Come on, do y'all remember dick soap? I was not making YouTube videos when this happened, but it was for uh, Sarah Janet's Akatar series. I'm pretty sure it was Akatar. And there was a book box. Oh, I can't remember the company. Was it like Bay Crate or Fay Crate? And in it, they had soap, but it was shaped like a penis. And that would, that had book twitter a flame child and i think i think there was like a letter Ooh, i bet you because i'm a digital hoarder and i keep screenshots okay and i know i have a screenshot of something deep in my archives of the box or of this letter i remember something about a letter but i'm like do y'all not remember dick soap gate and y'all probably do i think what's cindy made a video at the time probably has like a million views or something but whoo, that was a time to be alive. And obviously this is different, but I was like, I don't know, maybe y'all didn't, maybe y'all didn't remember that. So the other day, my opinion doesn't matter, right? I didn't receive the box. I'm not any, I'm not in any situation where had I received the box, there would be any negative repercussion. I would just be like, oh, well, would you look at that? You know, like, but I, I DNF red, white, and royal blue. I'm not a fan of Casey McQuiston's writing personally. Um, and I, I'm not signed up with anything from St. Martin's Press. So it doesn't affect me, right? And so people, you know, you're valid in your feelings, but I do think it is a mixture of the American shame around sex. And um, maybe y'all just weren't around for dick so gay. I don't know. Anyway, this happened, okay? Now, fast forward. We have St. Martin's Press putting out another statement. Okay, first they put out these statements, these next slides I'm going to show you, and then they put out another one a better one put air quotes around better well whatever anyway i'm gonna read you this one we'd like to make a statement to our publishing community about who we are and what we stand for the saint martin's publishing group is committed to publishing a wide variety of books from many viewpoints and perspectives we condemn racism in all forms including islamophobia and anti-semitism this is a value of our company and one that we hold ourselves accountable to every day we want authors, readers, media professionals, social media influencers, booksellers, librarians, and employees to feel respected and in particular to have their privacy protected. Some have questioned our values and made allegations about our data privacy and other practices, none of which are accurate. We have responded to emails sent to us directly and answered the questions to the best of our ability. We took the claims and concerns seriously and thoroughly investigated all of them. Our investigation did not find anything to support the claims. We share this information via email and in response to inquiries through our anonymous reporting system. We take privacy seriously as detailed in our company's privacy notice. If someone wants us to stop contacting them, they can let us know through our Your Privacy Choices portal. And then they have a link to our privacy notice is in our bio. We appreciate all the support and positive feedback we received these past few months. And we want to thank you for partnering with us to fulfill our publishing mission of informing, entertaining, and inspiring our readers from all walks of life. Now, I will admit to not being as diligent um, in my following of shenanigans and mess um, in the community as I once was. So I know I saw this on their Instagram, but I only saw it briefly because I don't I wasn't getting on Instagram as much at the time. So I just know this came out first and then the other statement. So I wonder if this came out after the PR box was sent out and they were getting backlash because that's what it seems like, especially with the, the, the data privacy thing, because people were saying like, how did they get my information? But I'm not sure. Anyway, that was the statement. And then I'm going to go back to past Jessica reading you the latest statement. So this says St. Martin's Publishing Group. Granted, this is on the Macmillan website because they're under Macmillan. So I'm going to read this to you. Obviously, I'll have it on the screen. It says, Dear Readers for Accountability, We have received your latest note and would like to engage substantive, substantively, productively, and in good faith with you. We believe and hope you agree that we, ha we have much more in common than not. Most importantly, we share your unbending commitment to equitable treatment and standing against Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, and every form of discrimination. 
The suffering in Gaza is heartbreaking and we too have the fierce hope that there can be a quick resolution without more violence. As a book publisher, we denounce racism and exclusion in all forms, which is one of the reasons we've been actively fighting book bans. We stand for promoting diverse perspectives and encouraging open dialogue, and we have joined numerous legal efforts to stand up for intellectual freedom, including joining legal actions to support libraries and challenging and challenge book banning. In that spirit, we want to address your core concerns by sharing with you some new initiatives designed to help prevent harmful incidents and discussing what we feel are important and significant improvements at SMP. Finally, we would like to provide more specific information about how we protect the privacy of those in our early readers and influencer programs. New initiatives. We are in the process of expanding our website to provide for more meaningful engagement with our early readers, including implementation of a process for receiving feedback and empowering our early readers to make choices about what they receive from us. We are continually examining our processes to reflect the preferences of the influencers we work with. We've updated our social media policy to reinforce SMP's commitment to fostering a positive online presence and maintaining the highest standards of professionalism and integrity across all social media channels. Our marketing employees have received social media training with a third party to ensure our SMP posts are aligned to our values and we will continue to deliver training in furtherance of this goal. We are working with a third party facilitator to conduct DEI or diversity, equity and inclusion training focus on mitigating implicit bias. As part of our multicultural programming, we will be delivering marketing specific training focused on embracing diverse perspectives. We are in the process of appointing a head of influencer relations to oversee the early reader program to ensure that it is executed in the most equitable manner and address issues as they arise. We've improved the equability of our early reader program for pre-publication access to books. We're making the digital review copies of our books available to everyone within the early reader program. Early readers now receive a monthly email with pre-approved widgets for upcoming books. The only books not included are those that may be embargoed or don't have digital arcs. Again, you can read more about the early reader program here. We remain limited by quantity when it comes to printed arcs and books and we prioritize sharing those with those resident and we prioritize sharing those with those registered in the early reader program. Anyone not in the program is encouraged to bookmark this page or visit our NetGalley catalog to request titles. Privacy. The information the early readers give us is housed in a secure cloud-based database restricted to only four people. Others are granted provisional and temporary access based on subject matter related to the books they represent. The portal which houses all of our early readers data lives on our corporate so server which can only be accessed through a company login and our VPN. Every year we conduct compliance training to underscore the importance of securing personal data. We hope this provides much of the information you were hoping to discover. We have improved the equability of the SMP early readers, outlined our data, privacy protections, and most importantly, are implementing new initiatives designed to avoid issues in the future. We welcome ongoing communication. And this is from president and publisher of St. Martin's Publishing Group. So again, the demands were to address and denounce Islamophobia, racism from their employee. Now, they denounced it generally. I don't know what they mean from their employee, if they wanted specific information about what happened with this individual, but they denounced Islamophobia and racism. Number two was offer tangible steps about how they're gonna mitigate the harm the employee caused. And they talked about the um, training against implicit bias in the DEI training and changing the early readers program and again address how moving forward they will support and protect their Palestinian Muslim and Arab readers influencers and authors in addition to their BIPOC readers influence and authors now as a person I'm not on readers for accountability I'm also not um, a person who has been negatively affected by St. Martin's Press um, I Looking at that, reading their statement seems like those demands have been met. So then Readers for Accountability put out a statement um, basically saying like our demands have been met and like there's no need to continue forward with the boycott. We hope that um, they have a really long statement, which I can link, but they wrote this um, on the 27th. And they're basically saying over the last 10 months, Readers for Accountability has worked tirelessly to amplify the voice of our community, advocate for change, shine a light on systemic issues, and hold a major publishing house accountable. 
And uh, we like to acknowledge that there is certainly still more work that SMP can do, particularly in rebuilding trust and ensuring their actors, their actions align with the promises they have made. It is our hope to continue working with SMP to gain clarity on some of the actions they have proposed. We understand that some members of the community may feel SMP steps are not enough to address harm caused over the past 10 months. We respect those who choose to continue withholding their support from SMP. At the same time, we believe that ending the boycott now that St. Martin's Press has met our baseline demands allows us to focus on the future facing work of making sure these commitments lead to real lasting change. We remain committed to working with SMP as far as they are willing to continue pushing for meaningful progress in the publishing industry. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people saw that and were but then lean the the person i mentioned earlier who people say started the boycott said like respectfully i disagree and the boycott is not over so then some people have been going back to like the readers for accountability uh like TikTok and commenting and saying like this is not over because lean didn't say it was over and then that has prompted people who were a part of readers for accountability to come forward because other things that lean alleged were that there were no um, Muslim or Arab readers a part of Readers for Accountability and that she was not a part of it and while she's not a part of Readers for Accountability the people who have come forward said that they did have Muslim or Arab readers um, who were involved in Readers for Accountability so TLDR Sam Martin's Press seems to have made a statement that addresses a lot of the concerns that were presented by the boycott. One last thing I also wanted to add was a an author, I think, is it Rachel Runia writes, posted a story on Instagram that someone shared on TikTok, and I'm going to read that really quick. After seeing the recent R for A statement and retraction, I'd like to give my perspective because I haven't seen some of it outlined. I and other predominantly but not exclusively marginalized SMP authors have been putting pressure on Macmillan to meet the demands of the marketing boycott for months. We've sent email after email to and taken meeting after meeting with the people who control whether we get another contract. We did this because we agree with the moral imperative of the boycott. Through these meetings, we learned that elements of the demand, specifically commenting on any particular employee's actions when associated with a protected class, are forbidden by New York labor law. As such, an even broader coalition of SMP authors got together to work on a letter urging SMP to still try to meet the demands where they could, even giving suggestions for language options to incorporate. To the best of my knowledge, when the most recent statement was posted, SMP communicated to readers for accountability the legal situation that prevented some of the demands from being met in full. This likely went into R4A's initial decision to accept the statement and move forward in collaboration beyond the boycott. Now, I deeply understand if some of y'all just feel queasy about the whole thing and personally choose not to use your energy to post about SMP titles. I still personally choose not to consume certain products even without organized consumer boycotts. I get it. However, I do want y'all to consider the hard work and importantly additional information from conversations at the bargaining table that went into the R4A organizers' choices. I also want to acknowledge the hard work of authors and many SMP employees within legal and contractual limitations that supplemented the boycott's efforts to get Macmillan to engage. Finally, I understand that the internet is unwieldy and it was not the organizer's intent, but I do think it would be wise for future collective actions and publishing to do more to explicitly discourage participants from sending harassing DMs, emails to authors. So I think overall, at the end of the day, you have to make the decision what you're going to do. While obviously in regards to many things, you can seek um, words of advice or get information from sources, books, podcasts, YouTube videos, TikToks, um, from various people of varying degrees of, of knowledge. At the end of the day, you live with yourself. You live in your brain. Maybe only mentally ill people understand that, but you live in your brain. So you have to think what is right to you, okay? So if you think that it is not enough what St. Martin's Press said, and you don't wanna support market, like marketing those titles on your platform, then don't. If you feel it was enough, and you wanna market those books and support those authors by talking about them on your platform, then do. I just, I, I mean, I've done the same thing in regards to a lot of things. It's like, well, what did that person say? And that is helpful, but at the end of the day, you have to make the decision.
right? So you have to live with it. So choice is up to you. I don't, I, I, I don't know what else to say. So that is it for that. Um, I'll link anything that I can, like the Reach for Accountability, the St. Martin's Press statement. Of course, the link to the giveaway because you are a consenting adult and if you want a sex toy, you can get one, okay? Or a gift card towards one, right? Or you could just go to their website and get what you want. Um, but that's how I feel. Those are my thoughts. There's that. I think that's it. So of course, any information you wanna add that maybe I missed or your thoughts or opinions on what I discussed, please leave them below, but keep it cute and respectful. Thank you so much. <laughs> but that's it for me. Stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized, and sunscreen. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.